Bonjour à tous. Euh, mon français n'est pas si bien, donc je vais continuer en euh, anglais. Um, I'm going to show you a real-time dashboard uh, that I have built using uh, Laravel and Livewire. And if you don't know Laravel or Livewire, no, uh, no problem. Uh, I'll guide you through it. So for those that don't know me, I'm Freek van der Herte. I'm a partner at a Belgian company called Spasi. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is Freek Murte. I have a blog, freek.dev, where I uh, write about PHP and Laravel subjects. I got my side project, oh dear, which is an uptime uh, monitoring tool. And this one can not only monitor your homepage, but it can actually crawl your entire site and notify you of any broken links. And together with my team, I've also built uh, Flare, uh, which is an exception tracker, much like Bugsnack for PHP projects. Before heading into the talk, I want to say a few words about the open source contributions that uh, my company Spasi does. We now have uh, more or less 300 packages registered on packages. Most are Laravel specific, but we got quite a few framework agnostic ones as well. They've now been downloaded for uh, 150 million times, which is quite mind-blowing, I think, for uh, a team of our size, where only with 10 people. And those packages are being downloaded for 8 million uh, times a month, which is uh, also pretty nice. You'll find these packages on our website. On the open source page, you'll find a full list. Um, those packages are not entirely free. There's a, a special license on them called Postcardware, which means that if you use one of our packages in a production environment, you need to send us, legally speaking, a postcard. And on in uh, our office, we have a big wall where all the postcards uh, hang. Uh, our wall is actually a little bit too small because we get so much postcards. Um, but we want to share these postcards with you as well. So we take a photo of each one of them and we put them on our website. And you can find them on the postcard page. On our website, you'll also find a video section uh, where we yeah, share our knowledge, knowledge in videos. And I think about half of these videos are free and half of them are part of online uh, premium courses that, uh, that we sell. And there's also a product page in there because we not only do um, open source stuff, but we make uh, yeah, digital uh, products as well. So take a look there if you want to support us. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the dashboard that we have. And this is a, a picture I took from uh, our actual office. There are not too many people uh, in the office now, but I hope um, yeah, some of... Uh, some of my colleagues will return uh, to the office soon when it's, uh, when it's allowed. And you can see that on the wall, there is a big TV screen. So let's walk a little bit to the screen and take a look at what's on it. So this is our dashboard. It displays information that is um, yeah, nice to know for everybody working at, uh, at our company. It's built with uh, Laravel and Livewire. But before heading into the technical details, let me uh, say what is on this, uh, this dashboard. So on the left here, oh, I, don't have a I don't have a pointer currently. That's a little bit too bad. So you'll have to follow my descriptions. On the left hand side where you see the cat, uh, that's where all the tweets uh, are mentioned, uh, where uh, spasi underscore be is mentioned. So every time uh, anybody mentions us on Twitter, we get the tweet there. Then in the middle, you see the, uh, that there is a tile for each, uh, for each member, and uh, it lists the task they should be working on uh, this week. Uh, you only also see on my tile, on the Freak tile, that my avatar isn't displayed there, but uh, some cover art from an excellent album by Tool. And uh, underneath my name, you'll see the, the track that I'm listening to. So at um, uh, Spassi, we're all big music lovers, and this way we can see what everybody is listening to. In the top right corner, you see the time and also the, the temperature outside. We use an API to, uh, to get that information. In, on the right side in the middle, you see some events, launch spasi video section. 
And these are events that are pulled off from a Google Calendar. So we have a Google Calendar where we can just administer uh, our company events and they get listed here. In the bottom right corner, you will see a tile with a bike icon. And um, most of the uh, my colleagues at Spasi, they come to the office by bike. And in Antwerp, we have this bike uh, ride sharing system. So if you don't have a bike, you can just grab a public bike there. And that tile lists the, uh, the public bike stations near our office and it lists how many bikes are available there. So you know if you go to that bike sharing station that there are still bikes there. We pull that in via an API as well. And then finally, on the left-hand corner, you see uh, a tile with uh, some stats on our open source work, the amount of stars we have, the amount of contributors that we have, the amount of uh, open issues and pull requests. I need to get that number down. And then the 30-day download total and the total download total. Um, yeah, this uh, screenshot was taken, um, I think, a year ago. Uh, so you see that uh, in the meantime, we doubled the uh, total downloads. Okay, let's take a look uh, at how this dashboard is built, now that you know how it looks like. So Laravel dashboard is a free open source package that you can install into any Laravel application. It takes care of the positioning of all these tiles. So there is an easy way to say, hey, this tile goes in the right corner, this tile should be that big. And it also takes care of state. I've said a couple of times that um, these tiles um, pull in data via the API. In the dashboard, there's a way of just um, storing the responses of the, API, uh, of the API, so you don't have to fetch them when the dashboard renders immediately from the API. You can just fetch them from, uh, from the database. The tiles themselves, there are separate packages. So there's a Laravel dashboard package, which yeah, contains all the general kind of things, but the specific things of a tile are in a separate package, which is quite nice because these tiles are very easy to make and they are very modular. I'll show you that in a, in a couple of minutes. All of these tiles are also LiveWire components. And for those that don't know LiveWire, let me introduce it to you. LifeWire is an amazing package made by Caleb Porzio. What this basically does is that it enables you to create server rendered partials. So you can imagine it as like a blade template, or I guess that a lot of you use Symfony, like a uh, Twig template. But this Twig template has a brain on its own and it knows when to re render itself and it can. Um, yeah, just replace itself on the page. That's very short what LiveWire can do. So why do you need something like LiveWire? It's to add some interactivity in the page. So you can just click something on, on a tile uh, or on any LiveWire component. Something changes in its state. It re-renders itself and it replaces itself in the DOM. So what you typically would do with JavaScript, you can do with LiveWire, but you don't need any JavaScript knowledge to enable this. And we mainly use uh, LiveWire because we can pull uh, the tile. So that's a feature of LiveWire that you can say, hey, this tile needs to be re-rendered, um, uh, for example, every minute or every hour. And this way we can say like, hey, the calendar tile, it needs to be refreshed um, only once an hour. But the Twitter tile, we want to refresh that one every minute. If you want to know more about LiveWire, you should head over to uh, laravel.livewire.com. Uh, uh, yeah, even if you can't use it in Symfony or other frameworks, I recommend you to take a look because these ideas um, yeah, can, can help you solve problems in your favorite framework as well. So I've talked a lot about this, but I think it's better to yeah, let you feel how this, um, how this dashboard looks. So for the remainder of uh, this talk, we are going to go to PHP Storm and to the browser. So this is uh, the test dashboard that we'll be working with. And you can see there's nothing uh, really there. 
Oh, yeah, I see here in the um, in the chat that you can see my, my mouse pointer. I couldn't see it, so I'm glad that, that you could. Uh, now I can see it again, so I can point um, uh, to stuff. Let's go to PHP Storm. So here is a Laravel application. Um, and let's see what's inside composer.json. So this is basically just a vanilla Laravel application, and I've just uh, already pre-installed the dashboard package to save us some time. So here you can see the dependencies. So we have Laravel framework here, and all the rest are in the uh, default Laravel skeleton. And I've added these, uh, these passy ones. And you can see that we have the dashboard, which is the, the general, uh, functionality of the dashboard, and you also see that I've installed a couple of tiles that uh, that we can play with. So, what you need to do when you've installed the dashboard is to create a view, and in that view, you should um, uh, add this blade component. A blade component is basically a very neat way of writing an include. I'm pretty sure that you have something like this in Quick as well, where you can just include another template. Well, in Laravel, you do that with HTML tags. And these HTML tags, they map to, to another view. So I have um, this view here. Let me just pull it side by side and make, make some room here, like that. So if I do something here and I refresh, I got that something there. And if I have that dashboard here, I have nothing here, but you see that the background has changed. And if I inspect uh, this, yeah, you can see that uh, a lot of HTML has been rendered, and that the HTML is being rendered through this template, so uh, through this component. So if I click through, I see the dashboard component, and the underlying view has like the HTML. So that's what's being being rendered just by uh, adding this. Now this isn't uh, particularly interesting. So let's add our first style. So we have live wire tiles. And let's start maybe with adding a time weather tile. And it should be put at a certain position. And the position system works a little bit like an Excel grid where the uh, rows have um, numbers and the columns have letters. So A1 is in, uh, in a corner. So let's save this and refresh. And we have like a tile here. And you can see that it is full screen now because by default, the tile system, it uh, just tries to grab everything, the, the entire screen. Let's maybe make it more clear by putting something in C3. So just by doing this, our dashboard now has a grid of three, of three. And this one is in the top left corner and this is in the bottom right. Let's see it. Yeah, now we have, uh, now we have the two tiles. How is this achieved? Well, it isn't exactly rocket science. We just use um, CSS grid here. Um, let's, uh, how do I close this? I'm not going to look for it. I'm just going to make this bigger. So how does this work? This just works with grid. And you can see here uh, yeah, that we have that grid area here going on. I'm not going to explain uh, grid in its in its entirety. It's it's a uh, it's a um, yeah something that is uh, common to use in in CSS. We didn't we didn't invent this uh, on our own, and we just basically leverage this. And what we do is we translate our um, our Excel like notation into into grid. I'm going to show you that uh, that later. So yeah, this is how you can position things. You can also make things a little bit uh, bigger if you want. So if you want to have this one a little bit uh, wider, then you can say, hey, this should go to uh, column B1. And then you can see that you have made a wider tile. And in this way, yeah, you can just organize um, the, the tiles however, however you want. Uh, you've also noticed that yeah, we use a light team here, but there's also a dark team. And I haven't prepared this, so I hope it will work from the first time. Should just be setting this to dark, and then everything is uh, in a dark mode. So we have 
multi-teams here going on. Let's go back to this view here. Okay. Um, now that you know uh, yeah, how things are positioned, let's do something uh, a little bit more interesting, I guess. I'm going to um, remove this one, and I'm going to add another tile. And I'm going to add the calendar tile. And maybe we are going to add it uh, to position of B1 to B2. Um, and let's close the tag and refresh here. And now nothing is, uh, nothing is here because there's nothing in my application state uh, that has these events. I should, should first pull them in. But um, I'm going to use this style a little bit uh, to explain yeah, the, the whole flow to you. So I've said that tiles are separate packages. So if I jump to this tile and take a look at where this is installed, then you can see that we are in the uh, vendor directory, SPASI vendor, and we are in the Laravel dashboard calendar tile package. And you can see that there are only a couple of tiles here. There uh, are only a couple of classes here. Um, so yeah, I've said that a, a tile package is really small and I think I, I didn't lie. So let's explore what's in here. We have a, a service provider here, which is basically a class in uh, any Laravel package that just bootstraps uh, this all. This isn't really particular interesting to look at. Um, this basically registers the name of that cal calendar tile with the underlying uh, with the underlying class, and it also uh, yeah says that this package has a command that can can be executed. So it's a little bit of bootstrapping here, but it's really minimal. What do we have here for uh, for the rest? We have here a command that can be uh, executed and can be scheduled, and this command. It will pull in the, the data from, um, from Google Calendar. Uh, you see that we have an event class here, and this event class is uh, part of another package of ours that can communicate with a Google Calendar. So what, is, what this class does is that it will um, yeah, fetch the data, and it will put that data in a calendar store. And calendar store is also yeah, another class that is in this package. So let's explore that. So um, let's maybe go to the make command here. And here you can see that it isn't a large class at all. It's, it's pretty small. And what this class basically does is that it wraps around a tile um, model here. And let's just click through this one. This style is a model. And yeah, uh, I guess you can compare this with uh, a doctrine entity. This just is basically yeah, how you can write stuff into a database. Speaking of the database, let's maybe go to the database of this application. You can see that we have that dashboard tiles um, uh, table here, and this one can be used uh, by components to just store any state here. And you can see that the weather tile already stored some state here. Let's jump back to the um, to the calendar store. So calendar store is a wrapper around around tile, and if we go back to the command where we fetch things. We are going to make a calendar store, and then we are going to set events for calendar ID, and we are going to pass in the events that we got from the API. And what's being done here is um, it just puts the data on the tile. So all the events will be written in the database in the data column. Um, let's maybe see that, that happening. Um, I'm going to uh, execute that command. So this fetch calendar event command. Uh, I don't know by heart, but I think uh, Laravel will propose the right command to me, and it does. So yeah, fetching calendar events. If I refresh table plus now, you can see that uh, this, one, uh, this one was added. 
Um, let's see where we need to continue. Um, yeah, we only have one um, class left to explain, and that is the calendar tile component here. Um, and this calendar tile component, this is what is going to render that data. If I go to the browser again, you can see that we already yeah, display some information here. Um, and um, yeah, these are the events that are already on the calendar. So let's see how that, uh, that is achieved. So if I go back to, um, to my dashboard here, and I click through to this, then you can see that this one is backed by that calendar tile component, which is in the package as well. So this is where like the Laravel uh, magic comes in. Um, or the LiveWire magic comes in. Um, let's see where we, where we are going to start. Let's start with the render function. So what this will do, what this component will, will do, because we extend here LiveWire uh, component, is that it will render the data. But as soon as um, yeah, one of these things are changed, it will re-render uh, the data. That's basic Laravel. It will re-render the tile. That's basic Laravel uh, of our LiveWire uh, functionality. But what we are interested in is this refresh time in seconds. So keep that in mind. I've set that now um, yeah, at, a, at a low rate in the, in the config. I think I've set it at two seconds or something. Let's take a look at the view itself here. So dashboard calendar tile tile. This is also a file that is included in such a package. And this basically contains the HTML that is being, uh, being rendered by the tile. So if I just, yeah, add something here. And if I refresh here, then you can see that it was already added. I didn't even need to uh, to refresh my browser because the tile refreshes itself. So just by saving this, it should be, should be gone again. Yeah. Let's go back to the tile component. Here you can see that we are going to uh, go to our calendar store. And we are going to get the events for our calendar ID. So we are going to fetch what is stored in the in the database, um, and we are going to pass it to the view. And in the view, we are yeah just going to loop over them, and we are going to um, to add uh, these things uh, these things there. So that's like how it works. Let's take a look at how. Um, the positioning and the refreshing uh, works. Or maybe let's, th this is kind of fun to, to just see that it works. Let's maybe add something to uh, my calendar here. So I'm going to add uh, bonjour if up here, add event. And let's fetch event again. Add. And you can see that it, uh, it was added here. So. I'm not lying, this, uh, this actually all works. You can see that this HTML, uh, um, it contains another component, the X dashboard tile. And this is uh, a component that is provided by the general dashboard package, package that lets uh, help uh, creators of tiles uh, yeah, position things and refresh things. So you see that we pass in the position here and we pass in that refresh interval in seconds. So let's click this dashboard tile. And you can see that we're in the general package now. And all the properties of the HTML tag are being passed as, um, uh, as properties of this class. And you can see that grid area here which we, uh, and this contains the, or the position contains that Excel-like notation, A1, that we converted to grid area here. So I'm not going to bore you with this, but this is basically the logic how to go through, um, yeah, something like A1 uh, to A slash, uh, to one slash 
uh, one that's that's being done here. So as a package, as a tile package creator, you don't need to take care of that. Now next, that refresh interval in in seconds. So it's being set as a as a property here. And let's take a look at what this tile renders for you. So basically, we wrap whatever you have in uh, in your tile view with this HTML. Um, so slot here, um, that's a special uh, that's a special name. Um, what is being added here is everything that is added in those uh, in those tiles. So this will get passed to slot. So what this component does is just yeah, just adding some extra HTML around what, what you have provided. That refresh interval for second here, you can see that we add, uh, add something to a, a diff here. What do we add to a diff? A statement called wire poll, then the number. So this can be two and then an S. And this hints to LiveWire, hey, this style should be refreshed every two seconds. And if we go to the, the browser here and to the network, then you should see that happening, that calendar tile is being fetched and being replaced. Um, yeah, that's maybe, I'm not going to dive into these things that uh, that will lead us too far. That's a little bit of the, the LiveWire internals here. So what you should understand is that this calendar tile, it will re-render itself. And if there's uh, HTML changed, it will change that HTML uh, in the DOM of, uh, of your page. And it does that in a very, very efficient way. Um, OK, that is the general flow of how, uh, how a tile works. So let's recap. We have a command that fetches the, uh, the information from an API. We have a calendar store, which is nothing more than a nice wrapper around uh, a database table. We have the service provider, which does some basic bootstrapping. And then we have uh, that tile component and its view to render that tile on, uh, on a page. Now I want to do something uh, fun uh, to end the, the demo part. We are going to uh, use another tile, and that is the Twitter tile. So let's uh, add another one here. So Livewire, uh, the Twitter tile, I'm going to put it in a position C1 to C3 so that we have some, some room here. So this is the, the Twitter tile. And um, let's maybe go to uh, its, its package. You can see that it, uh, it's also a very simple package. There are a few more classes here, some value objects for, for storing tweets and stuff. And you can see that this one has a command, listen for, um, for, um, for mentions command. And in this uh, package, um, we leverage the, um, the Twitter real-time API. So the uh, Twitter has a few streams that you can listen to. And you can say, hey, I want to listen for uh, a, specific, uh, a specific thing. And in our configuration, we have said that we are want to listen for at spasi uh, underscore be. And whenever we hear something on the Twitter API, we are going to store that tweet in our Twitter store, so in our database. And yeah, we have that tile that is listening for what is in the database. And it will yeah uh, immediately uh, display any new incoming tweets. So. Let's maybe uh, let's maybe try that. So I want to start Twitter mentions, and this should actually now work live. So let me demonstrate uh, this to you. And if you want, you can uh, also try tweeting at this, and yeah, you'll have your moment on fame on the AFOP stream. Uh, hello, AFOP attendees, like that. I'm going to tweet it. And with any luck, this should appear here in a couple of seconds. And yeah, there you have it. So yeah, if you want to tweet something with spasi uh, underscore be, do it now and we'll see it here. Now I'll leave this into view here and you can see that uh, 
uh, Dirk Mira has tweeted something. Um, there's also support for images there. So if your um, tweet contains an image, it will be displayed there. Keep it nice uh, um, uh, if you want. Otherwise, I'll close, uh, close this down. Uh, I'll leave it here for a couple of minutes so everybody can have their little moment. And yeah, I hope that you see that yeah, this technology is quite powerful. If you wanted to create like a tweet wall or something, it's actually very easy to do. Uh, creating a tweet wall is nothing more than having like a couple of uh, live wire tiles or a couple of Twitter tiles here. Let's do this in A1, in B1. Yeah, I've saved in the wrong moment. That's why it, it crashed. Let's refresh this here. And now, yeah, we have yeah, a tweet wall here. There's something I think wrong in uh, here. It's it's this one. This is an image. There is like a, a strange character in there that we can't seem to handle. I need to fix that uh, after this. Uh, after this presentation. But you can see that it's actually, yeah, quite powerful to do this, to create a tweet wall. Um, you know what? I'm going to, um, there should be the tweet in here. I'm just going to remove this for now um, so that we don't get that error anymore. So don't tweet strange characters back at me, please. Let's do one more here. Uh, spacy B E hi like that or there is already one ah, yeah, without the camera emoji okay thanks so what you can do uh, also uh, for in these styles is that you can give them a title that's also something that um, that the package provides so you can give this a title a you can give this a title another stream or another like that the title should be displayed. Uh, should be displayed there, and I think this style also has um, maybe take a look here. A configuration name. So, if you don't give a configuration name, we will just use the default. But in the config file of this style, you can actually have multiple configurations. So you could have like another configuration. So you get another feed here. So that's uh, that's how that uh, that works. Okay, uh, I think this is everything that I want to say uh, of the demo. Let's head back to the slides. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, keynote like that. And let's maybe talk a little bit about LiveWire compared to WebSockets and a front-end framework like Vue. I get this question a lot like, shouldn't you use WebSockets? For, uh, for something like this, because this isn't real time. Uh, you should uh, yeah, use the appropriate technology and LiveWire is, is heavy uh, and stuff. So let's list up the, the pros uh, and cons. Our previous dashboard actually used WebSockets to do this. And the tiles, they were rendered with Vue. And yeah, all those tiles were in a single Laravel application. Those tiles weren't in separate um, components because Vue it needs to have like a build step uh, to be executable in the browser. You need to convert it to uh, to JavaScript. So our previous dashboard with WebSockets and Vue, the cool thing is it was real time. It's really real time. When an event came in, we transmitted an event over the WebSockets and it was immediately into Vue. And uh, a big plus of this is that there is no extra load when connecting an extra client or no meaningful load. In Because uh, if you think about it, in uh, if you use LiveWire, um, it refreshes itself through polling. So if you have like 100 uh, people watching at the dashboard, then there's like 100 times, then all those clients will start, start polling and those are all requests going on to your server. With um, um, broadcasting over WebSockets, um, yeah, this performance hit is ne negligible. Um, you can have like literally thousands of people uh, looking at that. Th this, so those are the plus sides. The downsides is that the tech stack is a little bit more complicated uh, because WebSockets uh, are needed and you need a WebSocket server or you need service for that. Um, there, you can potentially display all data if you don't keep it in a database. And there's also, yeah, I've mentioned that before, a build process 
uh, to render or to build all those, uh, those uh, JavaScript components. With LiveWire, there are also some pluses and uh, some minuses. So LiveWire, it's a, if you use LiveWire, it's a simple tech stack. It's just an application in the database. You don't need anything, anything uh, specific. Um, it's easier to package up tiles. Uh, I've, I, I've shown you that it's only a couple of PHP classes, and you don't need any JavaScript uh, knowledge at all. Uh, just PHP will suffice. And it's up to date from the first render because uh, those LiveWire components just fetch their, their state from the database, and, uh, and it's good. The downside is, is that it's not real time, but it's very, very close. You've seen that yeah, I've um, used that Twitter tile with a refresh interval of two seconds, and it's seemingly real time. For, for most use cases, this is enough. I think for yeah, other tiles, like that calendar tile, just polling every time, every time an hour or every time a minute is fast enough. Uh, the second point, load server increased with every user. I've touched on that. That's because everybody just polls on the server. But that isn't really an issue for our use case because in our company, we're only with 10 people. So only a maximum of 10 people will uh, have that dashboard open and our server can handle that. And most dashboards are just yeah, uh, put on a screen somewhere or uh, used in a company of a uh, where not too many people are watching on it uh, at the same time. So yeah, don't build like a public Bitcoin tracker with this, but for like an internal calm dashboard, this is certainly good enough. I've listed here as a downside, but I don't know if it's really a downside. LiveWire isn't an industry standard like WebSockets or Vue. Um, I've put in between brackets yet because in the Laravel community, LiveWire is yeah getting really, really popular. And I'm pretty sure that it will spill into other PHP communities as well. I should also say that the idea behind LiveWire didn't originate in the Laravel community. Um, it originated in the Elixir community uh, where they can do pretty neat things with it because Elixir is so much faster than, uh, than PHP. They can do yeah, real-time games uh, with it. But you can see that in the PHP world, this idea works uh, as well. So in closing, Laravel dashboard is an easy to use package that can help to uh, set up a dashboard in no time. We have extensive documentation and let me uh, quickly show you the documentation. Um, the dashboard talks here. So this is uh, the documentation at our website, spasi.be slash docs. And yeah, everything that I've shown you is uh, written down here as well. And you can see here uh, in the overview of tiles that we have a couple of tiles that we created, but the community stepped in and yeah, they created a big list of tiles that you can already use. And one that I want to highlight is Vapor Metrics here. Vapor Metrics is a platform for Laravel to uh, host um, serverless application on AWS. And this tile is a little bit mind blowing. This tile. Uh, it's actually a collection of tiles, just gives you an overview of how your application is doing. So think about it. If you have like an application that you're running via Vapor, you can have like a dashboard like this yeah, in, in five minutes or something. You don't need to do anything special here at all. And you can easily customize this all. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go back to the presentation. So extensive documentation, you can create your own tiles, community contribute tiles. And um, yeah, I, here's a link to the documentation. So yeah, we, are, we have reached the end of this presentation. If you want to yeah, read, if you want to read everything that, uh, that I've said, you can head over to my blog. I've written an extensive blog post about all this where I also explained a few other tiles. Um, go to our website, open source. I'm sure there's a package for your next uh, project in there. Uh, I've said that we try to keep our open source sustainable by also selling uh, paid products. And you can use uh, that um, coupon code, Bonjour Afub, at our site uh, in the next week to get 20% discount on everything that we sell. And yeah, there's two other links. Those are the two uh, SaaSes that I run. 
So yeah, this is everything that I wanted to say. I hope that uh, you liked this presentation and that it uh, inspired you um, yeah, to grab some I uh, ideas and yeah, steal them from the Laravel community to your uh, favorite uh, framework of choice. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Freak. Merci beaucoup, euh, Fric, pour euh, cette super conférence. Euh, alors, si vous regardez bien le chat, euh, vous avez... Euh, donc là, on va faire une pause de 30 minutes environ. Euh, il y a une animation sur Klaxoon. Euh, pour ceux qui étaient euh, là il y a deux semaines, euh, ça, rien, de, rien de nouveau par rapport à ça. Et sur la Room Livestorm de Tours, euh, vous aurez euh, l'animation par, par Frédéric Boucherie. Uh, Freak, we had some questions. Uh, is it okay yeah. to answer by text? Yeah, sure, no problem. Donc, uh, Quentin et, ah, et Jérémy, uh, voilà, Freak va vous répondre en texte. Donc, on laisse la, la room live storm ouverte pour ceux qui, voilà, qui voudraient consulter les réponses. Et, uh, et nous, on se retrouve à 11h15 avec uh, Frédéric Blanc pour parler de. Ah, Pardon, pour parler de l'architecture hexagonale. Et euh, en parallèle à Tours, à 11h15, vous aurez Romain Clerc qui vous parlera de l'évolution du web et de ses conséquences. Merci à tous et, euh, et à tout à l'heure après la pause. <rire>